Infrared spectroscopy gives us information about what functional groups are present in a molecule and what ones are absent. Now, how cool is that? In terms of discovering what the exact structure of a compound is, of course, it's critical to know the functional groups. Now, let me tell you a couple things about the spectrum itself. There are two main regions in an IR spectrum. The one that starts right about 4,000 and goes down to almost 1,500. And a second one that starts much at 1,500 and goes all the way down to 500, 400, the rest of the spectrum. These two regions give you distinctly different information. The one on the left from 4,000 to close to 1,500 tells you information about specific functional groups. The second region provides a molecule-specific pattern. In the first region, we're going to see only a few peaks, very specific locations. When we get to the second region, the pattern is very much more complex. These specific absorptions in the left-hand region come at frequencies that are distinctly characteristic of certain functional groups. And so we can look up in a table the specific frequencies where we see absorptions, and it will tell us what kind of bonds are likely causing those absorptions. On the other hand, the region on the right is a complex pattern, and it's typically pretty difficult to interpret in terms of specific functional group absorptions. But rather, it has a distinctly different use. This is called the fingerprint region. And this region functions just like fingerprints for people. No two different structures have the exact same fingerprint region. So if you think you know the structure of a compound, and you find in the table of spectra of compounds that exact structure, you can compare, compare the fingerprint regions. And if they're the same, then that is the structure. So this pattern has the potential of proof positive identification of a structure, or on the other side of the coin, proving that two structures are different. So this is a very useful region in terms of structure identification, even though it doesn't tell us much really about the specific functional groups. On the other hand, that region on the left does tell us quite a bit about functional groups. You can look in tables and see specifically where one would expect certain functional groups to absorb. I'm going to give you some general information. Up in this region, we expect to see NH. We expect to see OH. We may be able to distinguish between these two, but it isn't always so simple. Around 3,000 and in the upper 2,000s, we'll see a variety of C8 absorptions. And just exactly where this comes, depends, among other things, on the hybridization of carbon. Moving further to the right, in this region, we'll see a triple bond, if it's present, between two carbon atoms, between carbon and nitrogen. They come in a similar region. That's not too surprising. The carbon and nitrogen weights are similar. The triple bond strengths are similar. And then finally, in the region that's in the roughly 1800 to 1600, a variety of carbonyl functional groups appear. And you may get some very specific information about which carbonyl-based functional group we're talking about, depending on where it comes. But other structural features in the molecule can move those absorptions around, so it's a little bit tricky to say exactly which carbonyl functional group you have. So here it is. There's a specific functional group region on the left. And in these very specific portions of the region, we can see NH or OH, CH, triple bonds, and carbonyl, all separated from each other. So that's extremely helpful. If there's no absorption in any one of these particular regions, or several of them, those functional groups are absent. And then, of course, we have the fingerprint region. A complicated pattern that is molecule-specific that lets you, like fingerprints for people, say yes or no 
to whether two samples have the same structure or not. Finally, I thought you might want to see a specific actual spectrum. So I have one here taken from a database that's kept in Japan, the SDBS database that is extremely useful, widely used by many. And take a look at this spectrum as illustrating what I was just talking about. There is little absorption in this region, no NH, no OH. This absorption occurs in the range for CH, so we know CH is present. In this range where we expect to see absorption for triple bond, absorption is absent. So we can say there's no alkyne, no nitrile. And then finally, we see a strong absorption in the range where we predict carbonyls will absorb. And by the way, carbonyl absorptions are almost always strong and sharp, as you see here. On the right, we see a complicated pattern that will be very difficult to interpret. It's the fingerprint region, and it will let us determine whether our sample is exactly the same structure as some other sample. Now, this doesn't tell us what structure it is, does it? Unless we guess correctly and find the fingerprint match in a database. But it does tell us quite a bit about the structure. There's no NH functional group. There's no OH functional group. There is CH. There are no triple bonds. But there is carbonyl. So we know quite a bit about the structure, and then we can move on to get additional information from other instrumental techniques to help nail down the exact structure.